Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. In today's tutorial, we are going to check about one of the most important patterns in microservice architecture which is basically used widely that is choreography pattern. We will learn it with a simple hands-on example using Spring Boot and REST APIs. If you are new to microservices or struggling to understand how services talk to each other without central control, this video is for you. So here basically we are going to just I am giving you that what is choreography pattern and then I am going to the like create one example of it using Spring Boot and the REST API so that you can understand in real life how it is working. So let's talk about that what is choreography pattern. So the choreography pattern is a way for microservices to coordinate with each other using events without a central controller telling them what to do. Each service basically listens for a specific events and react to them. No services basically directly called another one. Instead, they are talking whatever the data they are getting from the events. So let's say here if we talked about one e-commerce example this is basically the one real world applications where customer place the order they are not actually bothered about the what is going on the background even they are once they place the order then suddenly they are getting the response that your order is placed successfully but internally lot of things actually going on like payment verifications then the shipping is available or not. So this kind of verifications or background activities are going internally. So how these things are happening? So there, here if you see this, this is a message broker or this is a kind of event we can say. So whenever like any kind of order is placed, then it will come over here like in the order service. This is the one of the microservice. This is payment microservice and this is the shipping microservice. So the order microservice, whenever the order is placed, then it will come over here. It will save the data and give the response back to the user. Internally, once the order is placed, it will push data into this message broker. The message broker can be Kafka or maybe RabbitMQ or maybe JMSQ, any message broker, okay, that we can use. So once we push the data into the here, then payment service basically is looking to that data from this message broker. So that means there is no link between this order service and the payment service as well as for the shipping service. They are individually run. What they are looking for, so payment service basically looking for data from the message broker. If any data is available, so the message broker, so from the payment service, it will pull the data and accordingly it will process the data okay so that means there is no dependencies these are work asynchronous way so order details will push the data here and payment service will pull the data and again once the payment service is success then it will push again data to the message broker accordingly shipping service it will, it will pull the data from the message broker and once it is success then it will maybe push the data or you can just update the order status over here Okay, so this is the activity. In case in between in something is failure, let's say in the payment, if it is failed, then we can do the rollback of the order services. So that we can also maintain the consistency. In that case, we can say that your order is not placed successfully. We need to update the status and we can also show them to the user, right? So this is the activities about this choreography pattern. So now basically we are going to create the uh, one is Spring Boot application where we need to create one microservices, let's say order microservices, and from the order microservices, we are pushing the data to the event. Payment service will pull the data from the events, and similar for the shipping services. Okay, so let's build one is Spring Boot application step by step so that you guys also can understand. Okay, in meantime, if you guys have anything, please do let me know in the comment section. Okay, so let's create one program, a Spring Boot application, and then write all the steps one by one. Okay, let's create the program first. So, first of all, for creating this pattern or implementing this choreography saga pattern, 
into our REST architecture, first of all, we need to create one Spring Boot application. So that I have already created over here and import as a Maven project here. So this is a basically Maven project. You can also create Gradle project also, but I am creating as a Maven project. Okay. If you are not aware of it that how to create the, is create the Spring Boot project. So in my channel already there are applications where I have explained that how to create the Spring Boot project. Okay. So you can go through over there. So now we just need to go through the dependencies. So this is a kind of demo kind of application. It is not a real world application. So that's why I am not using any database. So as a dependencies, I'm using the starter web, Spring Boot starter web, Spring Boot dev tools, Lombok. And this is the, basically this is the important dependencies that you need to consider. That is Spring Boot starter web, which basically consists of the dependencies for creating the REST APIs. Okay. And this is kind of dev tools to load the applications on live reload basically. And Lombok, we no need to write like manually create the getter and setter. Instead of that, it will basically uh, generate, it's give us some annotations. We just need to give those annotations so that we don't need to write the boilerplate code. Okay. Again, I'm saying if you guys are not able to understand this one, please do let me know in the comment section. I will explain the things. So this is the dependencies wise. Okay. In real world, basically, we can create multiple applications, multiple microservices. Let's say the order microservice, it's a separate one. Payment microservice, it's a separate microservice. And as well as for the shipping microservices. But for demonstrating, demonstrating this one, I'm using single microservices. Also, for event, basically, we can use either Kafka or maybe RabbitMQ. But here I'm using kind of in-memory event bus. Okay, so let me explain the thing so that you are able to understand. So first of all, we need to define simple event classes. Let's say order create event and payment process event. These are just plain Java classes, which are basically holding the order details. So this is the order create event. So like if you see here, like this is the order ID and the amount. This is the order related create event. Similarly for the process event where only we need to pass the order ID. So these two things we need to create first, which will basically hold the order details and the payment details. Next, we simulate an in-memory event bus. As I explained in real world, we need to use the Kafka or maybe RabbitMQ or any other event bus system. But just to demonstrating this one, I am using the in-memory event bus. It let us publish and listen to events inside the app without setting up the Kafka or RabbitMQ here. So just to maintain the simplicity, I am using this one. Okay. Then basically we need to create REST controller to handle the incoming order request. When a user hits the order API or maybe it will submit the order from the front end, then it will generate an order ID and publish an order create event. Our payment service basically is registered to the event bus. When it hears an order create event is created, then it will process those payment and publishes payment process event. Let's go through this controller. So this is the controller I have created here. So if you see, we have mentioned this as a REST controller, then request mapping. Then here, if you see, notice that event bus, this is the in-memory event bus. If you clicked over here, so this is the in-memory, okay? So subscriber we have created over here, okay? This is the in-memory kind of event bus. So once the create order is basically called, it's basically passing the amount, then we are creating one order ID, unique random ID here. Then we are creating this order create event, right? We are passing this order ID and the amount. And then in the event bus, we are publishing this event. And here in the we are returning this order is created with this order ID. Once we are publishing this event into the queue or maybe local event in the local event bus, then actually payment processor 
payment event it will pulling the data from this event bus so payment service here if you see we have auto editing this one and it's basically subscribe this event so if it is a event of this order created event then even it will we can say that payment process for this order id and then payment actually again it will publish this event like this process event okay here also you are publishing this event now it will go to the shipping service again shipping service also subscribe this event and it will check the event is a payment process event then only it will say that product is shipped for this order id so that means if you see there is a no services are interlinked they are basically pulling the data from the events correct so that means they are not really tightly coupled to each other they are working stand alone they are working in asynchronous mode right so this is the called that choreography pattern that means they are not dependent in real world application instead of the event bus we are using the kafka template and here we are going to use the pull the data from the kafka data frame either kafka or maybe rapidmq okay so in this way basically it will work so this is all about actually this one next what we are going to do to demonstrate this one i am going to start this application and then uh, we'll check from the postman that once we are going to place the order then how the log it is logging so for this what we have learned so user can uh, place the order once the order is placed then we are preparing this order created event with this order id and the amount order id is the uniquely generated id and then we are publish this event here right and then we are returning the response to the user so the user can understand that whatever the order we have created it is placed okay now internally they are doing the processing now payment service basically pull the data from this event bus with it will check the instance of this event it is a order created event then it's a payment process for this order is successful and again it will basically publish this event here like with this one with order id shipping service also doing the same thing it will pull the data and say product is shipped for this order right okay so now basically i have started this application okay from here like from here you can just do this right click and say this java application so it will start the application so here the application got started now from the postman i can click here so here if you see the order is created and this is the order id this is the unique id okay now we'll check from the log here so here if you see the payment process for this order id and product also shipped for this order so that means once we clicked on the order so it will push the data here with this event so it will return this response and payment service pull data from over here and log this one similar kind of things for the shipping service also so that means these three services are not dependent to each other they are just basically worked whatever the events they are getting from the that particular message broker system right so this pattern is called the choreography because there is no central controller services react to the events not to direct api calls right each one known its role and says stays basically decoupled from the others this makes it the easier to scale and extend the system okay so what we learned why what is the choreography pattern is build a simple example using rest and spring boot and also saw the how the services can communicate through the events without tight coupling this pattern is powerful for building event driven scalable and loosely coupled microservices if you found this tutorial helpful don't forget to like share and subscribe for more real world spring boot example see you in the next videos for the time being thank you see you in my next videos bye bye